All right, before we get into the knowledge check, let's go ahead and do a quick review of lists. So as you saw, we can create a list using square brackets, right? Bracket to start it and a bracket to end the list. And we can contain any items in here. We can even mix uh, different types of data. For example, here we've got some integers, we've got a character string, we've got a floating point, and we even have a Boolean in here. All right, so we have a list now. And if we want to access any of this information within the list, we also do that with square brackets. So that's going to be something that you're going to see often throughout this course, is that when we are doing any kind of um, indexing um, or trying to access certain things within data objects, we often use bracket notation, right? So um, Python is zero based. Uh, indexing, which means the first item in an object um, is always contained in the uh, the element item zero or location zero. So if I pull out the, if I want to get the first element, it's actually indexing for element zero. Okay. If I wanted to get my name out of here, right? So this is the one, two, three, the fourth element. But since it's zero based, it's actually four minus one, the third location. Okay, and you can see I can pull that out. Now we can always pull out multiple objects. I could get, let's say, three through five, right? And what this actually does, it's, it's inclusive of that first number and exclusive of the last, right? So it's saying I wanna pull out uh, the third and the fourth, but not the fifth. So it's the third up to, but not including the, the fifth item in this case, okay? So just recall, there's some nuances when we are doing um, indexing in this form. Um, sometimes it'll, it'll catch you, uh, but we'll work through a lot of examples throughout this course, so you'll become more familiar with how we do the indexing. Now, part of lists, um, that, that's a, it's a good characteristic, is that it's mutable. Right, so we can change an existing list. And what that means is I can always change a certain element of interest, right? So I could take L and let's say I wanna take that third location, whoops, right? And third location is my name and let's say I wanna update this and I want it to be my full name, right? Now, if I were to go take a look at that list, you can see it has been um, mutated, it's been edited, it's been changed, right? And that's what that means with the mutability. Um, so we can always change existing elements within a list. Now, there are several operators that work with lists, right? So for example, we can always check the length of a list, right? We can always check to see if, uh, let's see, something is in a list, right? And that can be handy if you're trying to do some kind of uh, logical expression um, to check to see if something exists in or does not exist in, right? And we can even use an operator, let's see, and this is a method, a list method, right? Where we want to add something onto the list. So let's go ahead and add 6043. Right, and now if we check our list, we see we have a new element at the end. We've appended this data type, this value to the end of our list. Now we can always have um, multiple lists, right? Let's say we have L2, which is just another list of integers, right? And if we want to go ahead and add L plus L2, we can do that and you can see it combines, right? So we have taken the second list and we have actually appended or added it to the existing list. So we have one list now where we have combined the two. All right, so let's check out this knowledge check and use some, some of the information that we, we gained from this lesson um, or this section to answer these questions. So we've got this list L here and if you take a look at this list, it actually looks, it may look a little bit confusing, but what we have is we have a list and it contains other lists, right? So it's, it's actually, there's nested lists going on here. And that's actually what makes this knowledge check a little bit more challenging, 
All right, so the first question is, all right, can we index to grab the word banana? So we're, we're trying to get this part of this list out, okay? So we can see we actually have our first element is 10. So let's just go ahead and look at that. So that's 10. The second one is going to be 3, 4. And the third one, which is at the lo index location 2, is this larger list, right, that contains several things. Five. So this is a list that also contains more nested lists. So now that we've got kind of that list extracted, now we need to do more indexing, right? So we actually can go in and say, all right, we want to pull out that second item within this nested list, right? And that pulls out this portion, which Banna is still a list item embedded in that, right? And we see it's, it's the third item, right? Which is at location two. And now we get Banna out of there, which is inside of a list in the first one. So we could actually go all the way in there and pull that out. And now we get to the character string, right? So we can combine multiple indexing procedures um, to, get, to get to nested lists or nested data structures, all right? Now it says change the value of this Banna to Banna 6043, right? So all I need to do is do an assignment procedure here. I'm going to say Banna 6043. And now when I go back and I take a look at my list, that, that uh, element has been updated to reflect what I have now assigned, right? I've changed my list. Now the last part here says use slicing to get the last two elements. All right, well we can do, there's, Python has a bunch of really great slicing tools. Um, or syntax procedures to get to certain parts of a list, right? And so one of them is we can always we can always get the last item um, in a list by just saying negative one, okay? And if we wanted to get the second to last, I could do negative two, right? And so that's getting this one right here, right? But I want to get basically these last two elements, one and seven. So what I can do is just add this colon here and I leave it blank on the other side. And that's just going to say, get item, get the second to last item, and then get all items up to the end of the list that follows. And so when I do that, now I see I get items one and seven. That's the last two elements in this list.